Hello everyone, AK Academy here and welcome to a totally new series which is build a modern cloud apps with Azure and .NET Core. Actually, this one is a very, very important series for every .NET developer that new to the world of Azure and the cloud in general, or let's say the new concept of software development. A lot of, uh, a lot of topics to talk and resources to cover in this series, but it's going to be very, very important, especially if you are developing, uh, let's say, traditional applications right now, and you don't know too much about cloud and Azure development and Azure resources, so to leverage in your uh, applications. So this course is exactly for you. And as I've said, too many topics to cover, and I will talk about all of this uh, in a bit. Uh, before I get started, uh, with you, Ahmed Muzaffar, I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, .NET developer, and technical author. You can uh, reach me out via Twitter and GitHub, and also via my official website, as you can see in front of you on the screen. So, before we get started and deep dive in this series, let's just take a brief history about software development from 70s till 2020. Actually, software development has passed through multiple eras. At the beginning, then the middle one, then the new era that we are actually in right now. This one is just from my own perspective, let's say, but we will discuss this together. Here, in general, when you're developing any software solution, you need three parts to achieve what you want or what your customer wants, let's say. You need a coding frameworks and programming languages, like typing the code, the coding perspective, let's say. Then you have some the logic of the business you are trying to automate. In addition to that, we have the user experience. So you put all of those together and you have a full application that actually runs and satisfies the customers. But what I mean by coding and frameworks, I mean uh, the amount of code you type to achieve things. For example, how to write a file, how to like type code to make a responsive UI or whatever. When it comes to business logic, what the requirements of the business uh, that your customer needs actually, and user experience uh, doesn't mean he, uh, doesn't only mean here the the UI and the colors. I mean also by the responsiveness of the application, uh, the reliability, <coughs> and also the UI. So all of those topics together give a full application. But right now, when you are new for programming or you check YouTube or check the Google and you start with software development, you see tons of frameworks, tons of programming languages that actually makes your life very, very easy. We'll take a look at Entity Framework, look at ASP.NET Core in general, PHP or whatever, all of those programming languages and frameworks that are available out there right now makes you achieve too much. But this doesn't mean that right now everything is just easy comparing to the like old period. So here I have I have created this just to illustrate my concept a little bit. At the beginning of software and the world of computers, when the customer starts to use computers in their business, actually the business logic then was very very low. The customers don't accept the don't expect the PC to do too much things for them. But there are many uh, or some crucial tasks that need to be automated. So then, but it's not that that complicated. So the most complicated part then was the coding complexity because it's not easy to store your data with just line of code like what you have right now with Entity Framework and SQL Server. You don't have that powerful uh, programming languages, uh, frameworks. Uh, in comparing with what you have right now. If you don't have sometimes even a UI, so you are typing with a CMD, so things are not easy, but the coding complexity is very high, but the business logic is low, that the expectations from that software is very low, and you have the user experience. Uh, okay, at that time, probably most of the things was locally, and 
uh, they're almost a UI. It was about CMD, and even after the UI started, uh, user experience uh, wasn't that high priority. So the main thing is to make things that work. Then, after all, P appeared, and we have Windows and other operating systems that works well. The coding complexity decreased, but the business logic increased from another perspective, which means that your customer right now expects more from the application, from the automation process. They don't need only small things, but they expect the application to do many more things like store the data, retrieve it quickly, and uh, make that application also easy to use. This is what the user experience comes uh, in turn. So things started to be easier from the coding com complexity, but the business logic started to be a little complicated. This era till that 2010, after that we have the modern one, where mobile phones are everywhere, smartphone devices, IOTs, and we have a bunch and bunch of coding framework that actually makes your life very, very easy. Like, take a look at Bootstrap, for example. If you want to make a responsive UI with Bootstrap, a few classes you use, you can make a very responsive UI that works across multiple screens, from mobile to desktop to 4K screens. Everything just works very fine with less amount of code. But on the other hand, we have the business logic increased too much. So the customers right now expect the app to do too many things, almost everything. And in addition to that, customers also expect the application to be genius somehow and take some decisions based on the AI and machine learning and the data they, they, they enter to the system. So yes, coding complexity decreased, but the logic is, has increased too much. In addition to that, user experience, it's a very important part. The apps right now should be very fast, should be very easy to use. You have to use, for example, sometimes automatic data entry, you have uh, to colorful UI, very responsive one, uh, use things like brush and drop, and so on. This is just a few examples. So at the end, it's an equation, and it's about coding complexity, business logic, user experience. These three concepts together make a full application. The result is the same from the early days of software development at the moment, but those parts are some uh, one increased and the other one decreased. So this is just the general idea. So to make a very quick recap about that, the first error objective is just to make apps that work. The customer wants that task to be automated via the PCs or the computers, so they don't take care about anything else, they just need that task. But in the modern era, or in the second one, they need apps that work, but somehow works well. In addition to all of that, the code should be written very well. So other developers can interact from this concept. We have the architecture, and this is the era of OOP. We have coding architectures, patterns, and many things. That, so the programmers should uh, take care of while developing these applications. But what actually we need in the modern era? Because if you look right now, as I've said at the beginning, we have very complicated right now framework that actually makes your life easy, but makes it very complicated things at the same time. If you take a look at the patterns and the architecture of your application, there are many, many patterns, very easy to implement, like repository pattern, you have the solid principle and whatever. So things started to be organized from the coding perspective, but what is the requirement of the modern era? Okay, well, let's take a look at this application, it's WhatsApp. Basically, if I ask you a little question, if you have right now a Visual Studio 2019, SQL Server, ASP.NET Core, Xamarin Forms, and Entity Framework with Signal R for real time, what makes you, or what is the obstacle that you have developing a chat application just like WhatsApp? Basically, uh, I think you can just do the same or maybe better, at least from the UI perspective. But Let's assume that you build that application within three months and you put it on the App Store or Google Play. You have about 100 installs and everything is just working great. You are very happy. The customer is very satisfied and they are putting uh, five star reviews for you. Okay, then after a while, you have 1,000 installs or more 
and you are somehow satisfied and the people still put uh, positive reviews for you, then suddenly after a few months you have 1 million installs, but you are not happy because let's have a look. You have about more than 100 million messages a day. For example, your database file because you are using SQL, you have an MDF file and right now it's more than 500 gigabyte. So very hard to maintain. In addition to all of this, like making backups, restoring, everything is just hard. In addition to that, the queries take so long and the application performance start to be very, very slow. And the users are not satisfied anymore because this application is not scalable that much to be able to serve that huge number of users. And this is actually what it matters right now. Let's also have a look at uh, this screen. If you are a Formula One van like me, of course you are seeing this uh, graphics on the screen while you are watching the race. You have all of this data. This car generates billion of records at every race or on every lap. And if you are watching right now from in the modern era after 2014, you have very advanced graphics that actually gives you data in millisecond. Billion of data being processed and uh, served to you just within that milliseconds. So it's not only about coding perspective or we're architected, you have to develop an app that's actually scalable and ready to serve that billion of users right now. This is what's important or this is what matters because right now you have billion of devices existing here and there from mobile phones to PCs, screens, even IoT devices, all of this are generating data. Internet connection becomes very, very fast everywhere in the world. So you have to expect your application and the customers expect your application to work very, very fast and very scalable. Take a look also at Microsoft Teams when the quarantine started, like it went down a little at the beginning and then it was very easy process to scale that out and make the application serve that 75 million users existing out there. So this is actually what matters and this is actually what clouds is all about. You have to develop application that able to serve a huge amount of users, billion of requests. You have to be able to manage a huge data like databases of tera of bytes, not only gigabytes. And you have to be able to manage all of this scalable and also the application should be very very secure because that advanced of technology makes it on the other hand a little bit vulnerable for attacks so here is what azure and or aws or in general the cloud comes to play if we take a look here at all the services available for us on azure from uh, virtual machines to app service, SQL databases will manage the SQL databases, function apps, Azure Cosmos DB and NoSQL, Kubernetes services, uh, Dockers or containers in general, AI machine learning, analytics, reports, Power BI, DevOps, identity for security, Internet of Things. We have a bunch of resources that will manage that existing all over the globe across the data center that Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services have. So if you are able to leverage that very well and take advantage of all of this with your .NET application, because this is what we are concentrating on right now, of course, but if you are a Java developer or PHP, I don't know, you, there is also, you can leverage the same things, but this course is concentrating on .NET. We can build awesome applications. You can enjoy your development because right now it's become easier. Yeah, you have many resources, but all those resources are managed very well. And you have very scalable and powerful applications that's ready to serve that million customer of your chat application. And this is actually what the goal of our course. We will learn how we will have a Blazor client and ASP.NET Core API. Then we will take a look at the various resources that Microsoft Azure serves for us, like SignalR service, Azure Active Directory for authentication and authorization. We have the Redis for caching, Cosmos DB and SQL, how you can 
uh, develop an application that deals with a data source with a one millisecond latency, imagine you are developing a game like Call of Duty and all the games that are existing right now in the market. They are serving millions of users at the millisecond and everyone just playing very happy, it's very speed, it looks like a local network that actually not only because of the internet speed but also because of the great architecture of that application and the great advantages of cloud. How we can take advantage of Microsoft 365 to make your app integrated with uh, Office, OneDrive or whatever. We have the AI services add some intelligent to your apps so in this case you can serve a very amazing application that actually your customers will be impressed of so this is the goal and the topics we will cover within this series and in every video we'll talk about a part to see how we can build a full app with all of this that actually works very well then deploy that app and make it available for the customers that was everything and Hope you enjoyed it and you get the idea out of this course and why it's important. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button to support us to continue with more and more videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.